chapter of your english literature i would for before beginning anything i would request each one of you to write down the complete poem on the first page mention the name of the poem and the writer rabindranath tagore if you see the poem it is rabindranath tagore who has written the poem clear here so you will be writing this complete poem as your first chapter and as usual when you were in class 6 you remember we used to write the index as well so the index will have the following columns in the serial number you will write 1 in the chapter uh, you will write the name of the chapter and in brackets you will write the name of the uh, that is the poem then for uh, the date you will specify today's date okay and you will write the poem i'll give you time the uh, the number of days we finish this explanation is the time when you are supposed to finish writing this poem then there are two word meanings given please see that you have those two word meanings written also either you can begin it or you can do after that clear till here now i read the poem and i explain it to you a fairy land is the imaginary home of fairies it is also used to refer to an imagined ideal ideal place now they are asking you mention any five things that you would do on in a fairy land of your own so obviously a fairy land is a imagination a person's imagination because nobody in reality has ever visited or has ever seen it so here is the poet imagination and who is the poet right now we are reading about is rabindranath tagore now before we read the poem we need to know a little bit about him so we come to this section where it is written rabindranath tagore was a poet songwriter story writer dramatist philosopher and educator he started writing in bengali and began translating his collection of poems gitanjali into english it was published in september uh, 1912 in london thousands poems a mm, just a second in 1913 he received the nobel prize for literature for gitanjali he wrote over 1000 poems eight volumes of short stories almost two dozen plays and playlists eight novels and many books and essays on philosophy religion education and social topics He also composed more than 2000 songs both the music and the lyrics two of them became the national anthems of India and Bangladesh I hope you know that our national anthem is written by Rabindranath Tagore in 1929 he even began painting he was fondly called as Gurudev so this is the introduction about the poet about whom we are going to about whose work we are going to read now so here is the poem now let's read the poem to know what a child says about his fairy land so now here is a boy who is in his own fan- fantasy world has imagined a fairy land of his choice and is narrating the uh, visual effect of the land if people came to know where my king's palace is it would vanish into the air the walls of white silver and the roof of shining gold please switch off the mic it's being recorded so please do not do all this so now the this little boy he's saying nobody knows who uh, where my king's palace is that means he's considering that fairy land as a big kingdom of which there's one king and you know the moment people would know about it it will vanish why because it is only in his dreams in his thoughts in his imagination that he is able to visualize this kingdom and the king in it and the walls that means the outer part the appearance of this fairy land is it has silver walls the silver white walls and the roof is of glittering shining gold that means the visual effect of the appearance of the kingdom is it's all twinkling in silver and gold it's very flashy it's very attractive and the child find 
find it really interesting and amazing to be there. Now he's talking in the next paragraph. The queen lives in a palace with seven courtyards and she lives in <laughs> And she wears a jewel that costs all the wealth of seven kingdoms. Now, this little boy not only talks about the king that he visualizes in the fairyland, but he also visualizes the queen of the palace. He says that the queen's palace is having the courtyard, and the courtyard is so vast that it is occupying the area the seven times. That means there are seven courtyards and the vastness could be imagined and then he gives a visual description of the king, of the queen according to this boy he imagines the queen to be wearing the jewels and those jewelry the jewelry which she's wearing is so costly is so wealthy it's the price is even more what is given for the seven kingdoms that means seven kingdoms put together is the choice, is the cost of that jewelry in his wearing. But let me tell you, mother, in a whisper where my king's palace is. Now, the only person this little boy confides is the mother. He wishes to tell all his dreams, all his fantasies, all the small little twinkling imaginations about the fairyland to his mother. He wishes to share this only and only to his mother. And that too, if you notice the term whisper, he's not wanting to be very audible. He's not wanting anyone by chance, even by mistake, to hear what he's saying. He only confides it in the... Silence. Silence. 